It was a really hot and muggy day at the office. There were about two dozen people working in close quarters, and even with the fan at full throttle, everyone was sweating profusely. All of a sudden, everyone became aware of an unpleasant odor distilling upon the room. It increased until no one could really ignore it anymore. Finally, one man said, uh-oh, someone's deodorant has stopped working. A sweaty man over in the corner said, well, it can't be me because I'm not wearing any. Maybe you should have heard that there is a new bacon-scented deodorant made especially for people who sweat like pigs. It kind of reminds me of the old statement, common sense is like deodorant, the people who need it most never use it. Sweating is a natural and healthy process. It's interesting to note that women have more sweat glands than men, but men's produce more sweat. Sweating is a result of the body's attempt to cool itself off when there is either an internal or external increase in temperature. The unpleasant odor that usually accompanies perspiration is a byproduct of bacteria that feed on the sweat gland secretions. The ancient Egyptians seemed to be the first society that employed scented bathing to cleanse and cover up the aroma of daily life. For centuries, the perfume cover-up approach was all that was available to be socially acceptable. The first commercially marketed deodorant came in cream form in the late 1880s. I don't know what was in it, but it was so strong that it actually ate through the user's clothing. Though there are really no accompanying health benefits to deodorants like there are with other hygiene products such as toothpaste and mouthwash, because of modern society's obsession with smelling good, this underarm industry has become a multi-billion dollar business. Just stroll down the personal product aisle of your local supermarket or pharmacy, and you will see dozens and dozens of every flavor, sprays, roll-ons, sticks and pastes. There are two major categories of products that deal with underarm issues, deodorants and antiperspirants. They deal with the problem in completely different ways. Deodorants contain ingredients that are activated by warmth and moisture that kill the bacteria that are responsible for generating the unpleasant odor, as well as some form of pleasant smelling perfume to help in masking. They do not interfere with or stop the sweating process. Antiperspirants deal with the underarm issues based on a totally different principle. Their main ingredient is usually some form of aluminum which keeps you from perspiring by plugging up the offending sweat glands. Most antiperspirants include some deodorant ingredients to kill bacteria just in case. There are a number of studies that indicate that the aluminum is absorbed by the body and can cause mutation of DNA and have been linked to Alzheimer's disease, breast cancer, lymphatic, and kidney disorders. The point is there is a difference. In these two products, even though a number of studies are inconclusive, out of an abundance of caution, I personally only use deodorants and recommend others do the same. But please use something.